Good morning, everyone. Absolutely delighted to welcome you all to the Economic Summit, which aims to provide a platform to exchange knowledge, think creatively, and debate current issues. Back in 2018, Croydon Council organized our Economic Summit here at Box Park, and it's really exciting to come back here after all the challenges we faced during COVID. Today's conference offers a chance to meet and learn from the truly diverse group of speakers and to socialize with delegates in and around Croydon. The pandemic has had a significant impact on the Croydon's economy, especially for the evening and nighttime economy, leisure and retail. We have seen many businesses stop trading permanently and issues affecting UK businesses and economy, including financial performance, workforce, trade and business resilience. So looking back at what Croydon Council has done during COVID, Croydon Council has set up Croydon Business Task Force with the three bids, Croydon bid, New Eddington bid, and also Pearly bid, and also some of the, our external partners, such as Federation of Small Businesses, the London Chamber of Commerce, London Business Hub, and, uh, and also the LEAP, which is the London Lab. We also distributed over 100 million pound of business grant to 18,000 businesses. We are currently uh, distributing the Black and Asian Minority Grant and the Creative Business Grant so that businesses can apply for those uh, funding for their survival. We have also started a campaign called Love Croydon Shop Local, and that is encouraging local people to sh shop in their high street. A lot of activities has taken place as part of the campaign, and Croydon Council has also worked with a local business called Lukivo to make sure that we created three digital town hub apps for the three areas um, in our district centers in Croydon to make sure that people have the opportunity to look at their apps and um, shop locally. And the three areas we have invested that apps uh, are um, South Norwood, Thornton Heath, and uh, also Pearly. We have, we have started the process with a, uh, 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 in, in Crystal Palace, making sure that the Lucky was, was based in Crystal Palace. That's why we started that project in uh, Crystal Palace. We have also won two out of the three awards in the prestigious London Borough Apprenticeship Awards. We have won the, the two awards for the best uh, small businesses for encouraging apprenticeship opportunities as part of the 100, and 100 Apprentices campaign that we have run. We have involved 60 businesses, 60 employers as part of the campaign and created over 144 apprenticeships as part of that 100 days. And we are very pleased to see a number of partners getting involved, for example, our training providers, the colleges, the Croydon College, John Ruskin College, and uh, as I said, the 60 local businesses. It was really interesting to see how businesses want to come together with our local community, especially our vulnerable community, to make sure that, that apprenticeship opportunities are there. We also uh, won the award for the, the best work with supply chain. Um, for example, it is really important to understand how the supply chain works, and, and I know some of the businesses always contact councils to see how they can be part of that system. And lastly, I just also wanted to mention about welcoming the London South Bank University to Croydon. It wasn't an easy process. Croydon, as a council, has been trying for a number of years to bring that uh, university campus in the borough and really pleased to see that campus at Electric House. So there are positive signs already emerging in Croydon's recovery with businesses starting to innovate and change their business models, people starting to return to their business premises. However, we know that businesses are starting to look at the use of space differently. Our inward investment team have seen significant rise in inquiries from inner city businesses looking to negotiate better deals in Croydon where they have access to skills across South and great connections into London down to Brighton with access to rail, M25 and international airport. Croydon is still seeing growth with new buildings being completed. You just have to look outside and some of you have must have came to East Croydon Station and that walk from East Croydon to Box Park, you could have seen those high-rise buildings. Construction is still strong in the area, although we cannot ignore the challenges that construction are facing with rising costs, recruitment, and the material shortages. As a local authority, our role is to create as many opportunities as possible through, the, through our levers. 
Often this can be through planning, licensing, economic development, and inward investment. Our district centers are seeing an increase in activity as more people work from home. However, our town center is the focal point for much of our recovery work as we look to create new vision for our town center following the lack of delivery of new Westfield. On skills, with an exciting new campus, as I mentioned, with LSBU, we also have Spurgeon College, University Center, Croydon College, John Ruskin College, Royal Hampton University, University of Sussex, to name but a few, we are starting to see an opportunity for new innovation. However, it is really important to create proper employment pathways that support our residents working with our schools, FE, HE, and businesses to ensure that the right skills are available for businesses. There is also some work to look at those people who, that have been made redundant to help them transfer skills. We all often talked about upskilling and reskilling of the local population. The best example is the South London Partnerships Project called BIG, which is uh, Business Innovation and Growth, which brings new knowledge transfer opportunities across five boroughs that collaborate businesses with university support. And looking forward, creating local green jobs, accelerating sustainable economic recovery is the priority. In 2018, there were 185,000 full-time workers in low carbon and renewable energy economy. And uh, in 2030, ac across England, there will be um, 694,000 people. But our ambition is to see 1.18 million people by 2050. And we, as a council and a Croydon, want to be part of that. Croydon is gateway to London. From a local authority perspective, it is crucial that we work with uh, the London councils and South London Partnership on our recovery plan so that we bring external funding and the borough gets full benefit of the recovery programs that are being put into place. Croydon Re Recovery will focus on working with our key partners, stakeholders, and anchor organizations, which include Croydon N NHS Trust, the universities, and also private sector to deliver a new sustainable economy that provides opportunities for all. Lastly, I just wanted to thank everyone for working so hard to make this economic summit possible. And uh, for the last two years, we couldn't organize the summit because of COVID, but I'm really pleased to be back here and seeing so many familiar faces and the businesses. And I just wanted to uh, mention a couple of names, actually, and I'm going to embarrass some uh, Croydon Council staff and also White Label as well. Firstly, Catherine Glass from White Label for all your hard work and your team for making it happen and working with the the council for making this happen and also wanted to thank um, Croydon Council's lead for economic development, Carol Squares. Carol Wave, I know everyone knows you, but we also have Katie from uh, Croydon Council here with us as well. So thank you to all the team for making this economic uh, summit happen and looking forward to meeting you individually later during the course of the day and uh, thank you for attending. Thank you.